guys what's going on on Vile Self, and I got some uh, Battlefield 4 single player gameplay for you guys here. Uh, this comes as a request from my buddy Shock Waffles, who I would like you guys to follow on Twitter. He's pretty new to Twitter, he doesn't have that many followers. Um, give him a follow, chat him up. Like, like everybody else I, I basically talk to on Twitter, he's a gamer, like myself, he plays on the PlayStation 4. You know, he plays Call of Duty, Battlefield, Warframe, all types of games like that. He's a cool guy, get to know him, chat some games with him, and uh, yeah, follow him, at Shock Waffles. Uh, he requested uh, some Battlefield 4 single player, which I was glad because, you know, I haven't played the single player of Battlefield 4 uh, too much. Actually, the last time I played this game was January 1st. And I uh, haven't basically touched it since then, so it took me a little bit of getting used to to get back into it. But uh, I found my groove pretty quickly, and uh, you know, beat a few uh, missions, and it was pretty fun. I think I'll uh, I'll play it some more, and finally beat the campaign, which uh, I still haven't done yet. But anyways, this commentary is going to be about uh, Slipknot and their upcoming album, and you know what I think it's going to sound like, considering the fact that they have you know two. Uh, of their members are, are now are now gone. Um, one of those members being, uh, you know, the unfortunate passing of uh, bass player Paul Gray, who um, who passed away a few years ago, um, shortly after the release of their last album, All Hope Is Gone, which um, when was that released? I think it was released in 2010. Um, so it's been a few years. Uh, you know, Slipknot they kind of went went to a bit of a hole they didn't they stopped touring they stopped writing they stopped you know you know people thought they might have been done because you know they made it publicly clear that they do not want to replace their their friend their bass player that that died and i don't blame them for that i don't think you know if you're if you're in a band for you know 15 or so years if you're if your band member dies that you can't just you know pick up and replace them i mean you can certain bands have done that like guar replaced their guitar player when he died and stuff like that I mean, it's possible, but Slipknot, they just didn't want to. They, they, they felt like that that spot was, was Paul's spot, and nobody can really fill that void. So, you know, they did play some live shows. I, I did see them at a festival um, a couple years ago where they headlined, and, uh, you know, they had a big banner hanging in the back with just the big number two on it, uh, you know, kind of as a tribute to Paul. And there was nobody on stage taking Paul's place. Um, the bass track uh, was either a pre-recorded track or they had somebody like a techie in the back or maybe a, a friend of the band or something like that uh, playing bass backstage um, but they they did not replace Paul on stage and I don't think they ever will we'll never see uh, a bass player uh, in Slipknot um, any bass that we see on any future albums will just be recorded by you know a, 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 another bass player and they'll probably be given credit in the um, in the album sleeve and whatnot but you know we're not going to see another number two uh, donning a mask and and holding a bass in the band. I just can't can't see that happening. Um, as for the drummer, on the other hand, Joey Jordison has left the band um, under his own um, recognizances. He, um, you know, this happened a, a couple months ago, back in uh, December, I believe, or January. Um, Joey left the band. Uh, I don't know why. I have been. I looked it up, and we, there's nobody uh, has a real reason why it hasn't been disclosed yet. Um, but apparently, he left under his own um, his own choices, and so he wasn't kicked out of the band. But needless to say, uh, Slipknot has to find a new drummer. Um, I mean, it was already slated that they're gonna have a, a new album coming out this year, so. You know, I haven't heard anything regarding them picking up a new drummer or auditioning for a new drummer or anybody that's, you know, a close candidate or anything like that. And, you know, that's something that's got me a little a little shaken up over what the next album might sound like because as far as, as Slipknot as a band goes, I find that they're very uh, I find I find their main uniqueness about them comes from the style of drumming that Joey brought to the to the band. Um, like I don't really know exactly what it is about his style, but he's just got one of those styles that when he plays, you can tell it's him. And he really puts a specific flavor to Slipknot that just makes them sound like nothing else. And yeah, the rest of the band, they're talented musicians, they're talented writers, and you know, they know how to put on a, on a theatrical show and stuff like that. But for me anyway, personally, the drumming is what set them apart 
from from other bands. Like I know Joey's not the best drummer in the world. He's not the fastest or the most technical, but his skills that he has all combined and rolled into the package of Slipknot just really made them a unique band. And I feel like it's going to be really difficult for um, Slipknot to fill that void, to fill Joey's shoes, and to really, you know, maintain the sound that is that has made them, you know, who they are at this point. Um, as for how the next album is going to sound, I mean, those are just two factors. Like, you're lacking a bass player and a drummer, um, you know. So, obviously, the sound of the band already is going to be uh, a little different. Um, but also taking into account that every Slipknot album that's ever been released, including Mate, Feed, Kill, Repeat, has sounded vastly different than every other Slipknot album. Um, I mean, I, I feel like, you know, Mate, Feed, Kill, Repeat was, is old school. It's, it was a little experimental, a little raw. Um, the self-titled album was definitely one of the rawest albums, but it was aggressive, it was in your face, it was, you know, it basically put them on the map. Iowa had a, a very satanic kind of vibe to it. It was like a sickening, disgusting, sort of uh, melancholy type of evil. I don't know how, how else to describe it, but probably one of my favorite albums. Uh, you know, Volume 3 Subliminal Verses was starting to go for a more pop radio type of feel with some more toned down songs and some more, you know, mellow, you know, acoustic type of songs and stuff like that. And All Hope Is Gone just kept, took that step a little further and went with an even more mellow, softer type of sound. And they just totally sort of seem to have lost their edge from their self-titled um, and Iowa days. Um, I, I think this is largely in part to Corey Taylor having too much creative control in the band because he's also in Stone Sour and Stone Sour is like his baby. You know, that was his band before Slipknot and he still um, has Stone Sour going strong. So I feel like he's just putting too much Stone Sour flavor into the Slipknot band and I feel like it's making, you know, it's toning down Slipknot to the point where it's more like Stone Sour and I don't really like that. I want them to be two separate bands. Like I do like Stone Sour for what it is and I like Slipknot for what it is, but I don't want those two bands sounding the same. And I feel like with the last two albums, especially All Hope Is Gone, Slipknot is starting to sound too much like Stone Sour, and I don't like that because, you know, Slipknot, in my opinion, um, and I'm pretty sure according to sales charts and, and all that kind of stuff too, Slipknot is a much bigger band than Stone Sour. So if anything, if Corey was smart, he'd start trying to make Stone Sour sound more like Slipknot, but he's not doing that. And uh, I feel like his creative control in the band is hindering them a bit and sort of making them, I guess, lose fans at the same time as gaining fans. And that might sound like a balance, but the truth is the fans they're losing are the hardcore fans. The fans like me who, you know, I'm still a Slipknot fan. I'm not saying I'm, I'm not a Slipknot fan anymore, but I was way more a fan back in the, you know, self-titled and the Iowa album days. And I'm, I'm far less of a fan now that they're, you know, going kind of soft with their music. Um, you know, and the new fans that have come along are more casual type of people that listen to the radio. You know, they hear duality on the radio and, and they're like, oh yeah, I'm a Slipknot fan. Yeah, Slipknot's so hardcore. But the only album they'll listen to is like their last two albums because, you know, self-titled Slipknot and um, Iowa are just too heavy for them. You know, so I just feel like Slipknot's kind of transitioning from a metal band to a hard rock band, and that's something that's really not okay with me. Um, in an interview, Corey Taylor did say that the new album was going to have elements of Iowa and Volume 3, the subliminal verses, basically intertwined into the new album. Um, that to me is, is both good and bad because it depends what elements of each album he's going to incorporate. You know, is it gonna is it gonna be the heaviness of of Iowa, and the um, you know the technicality or the or I don't even know what he could bring from Volume Three, but Volume Three was just a much softer album in my opinion. Like it did have heavy songs on, it had some fast heavy riffs and some fast heavy drumming and all that stuff, some aggressive lyrics, but just the overall presentation of the album was a lot softer than Iowa was. It's just it, it was night and day to me. 
And, you know, I know people that stopped listening to Slipknot when Volume 3 came out because it just didn't cut it as a Slipknot album. You know, I still like Volume 3 Subliminal Verses, but as far as Slipknot album goes, it's 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 one of their weaker ones. Um, same with All Hope Is Gone. It's, it's even worse than Volume 3, in my opinion. They're kind of on a downhill slope, and I feel like they really need to go back to their Iowa roots to really get those hardcore fans like myself back in the game and peak interest in the band again. Um, so, for the new album, he, you know how Corey Taylor said it's going to sound like Iowa in Volume Three. That's, you know, that's almost like pulling two different worlds into one and meshing them together. And who knows what it's going to sound like? But if I had to take a guess, I'm going to assume it's just going to sound more like Volume Three Subliminal Verses, um, with maybe a little, few little hints of Iowa in there, um, maybe in some aggressive songs, you know. Or something like that but I have a feeling that uh, they're still gonna maintain the uh, the style they've been going with for the with the last two albums where they're kind of you know making two or three songs that are potential radio hits that can be played on the radio and you know casual fans can start listening to them and getting into them um, and and in short basically what that is is it's basically selling out um, I hate to use that term because you know bands just do what they need to do to make money and they needed they do what they need to do to to you know sell out their shows and stuff like that and a lot of bands do it man there's it's very rare this day and age to see bands that don't sell out at one point in time in their career um basically they'll start making songs you know they'll come out they'll be a heavy band they'll get the attention of the the underground crowds and the uh you know the metal the metal community and they'll get the attention of all those guys and they'll make a name for themselves and then once that name starts to spread a little bit they'll start creating songs that are more softer and more you know tuned for the radio basically and more tuned for casual listeners and then the casual listeners will jump on board and then there you go the band just expanded their fan base yet they don't really even sound like the same band anymore um, I mean I, I can give you guys a million examples right now of bands that have done this and, uh, you know, fans are just technically not that happy about it. Um, System of a Down is another example that comes to my mind just off the bat. You know, the first two or three albums were, you know, were amazing. Just their style was so unique and their, their flavor was just something that you never heard or, or, or witnessed before. And then all of a sudden they come out with a, with a double disc album, which, you know, in my opinion is still great. But it was so different. It just didn't sound like the classic System of a Down that we all came to know and love. And again, I know people that stopped listening to System of a Down because they put the, that double disc album out. And sure enough, the band goes through some problems, some turmoil. They go on a hiatus, which is basically still going on. Um, a couple of the band members release, you know, side projects here and there, which do not great but not bad you know they're selling records but they're not topping charts or anything like that but needless to say it's just something bands do and it's not something i completely agree with because i feel like bands should cater more towards the fans that made them big in the first place so you know all the fans that bought you know the self-titled slipknot and the iowa record which um from what i know i didn't exactly look this up but from what i know they are the, still the top two selling Slipknot albums um, out of out of their four recent, uh, not recent, but out of their last four album releases. Iowa and Slipknot are the top two selling, so why not just keep going with that style? Why not just keep going with that hardcore, raw, in-your-face, you know, controversial type of type of vibe that put you guys on the map in the first place? You know, it made them famous in the first place. And that's where their core fan base came from, so that's who they should be catering to. They shouldn't be trying to cater to these these radio listeners and these casual, you know, um, music enthusiasts and stuff like that, who, uh, you know, really don't know anything about the the roots of the band to begin with. So that's just how I feel about that. Needless to say, I am excited about the new album. I hope it does come out this year. Um, but I also hope it's not rushed because, you know, as far as I'm, I know now, they haven't done any studio time. You know, they've they've basically written some stuff for the album, but they haven't recorded anything or, you know, I really don't know where they're sitting. They're being sort of hush-hush about it, but I am excited about it and I will buy it. I am a Slipknot fan and I know 
even if it's not a lot like Iowa, or if it's not a lot like the style of Slipknot that I'm that I'm particularly fond of, I'm still gonna like it because you know each one of these guys in the band are, are extremely talented musicians and talented writers, and they basically just really know how to make um, good music. Whether it sounds a little bit more like Stone Sour or not, it's still good music, and I do appreciate that. So I'm sure, regardless of how the album sounds, I will like it. And, you know, I am looking forward to it for that reason. Um, a second part of the video uh, re was requested where I, he said, uh, Shock Waffles asked me, if I was in Slipknot, what would my mask look like? Well, the possibilities, <laughs> the possibilities are endless. Um, originally, when I was thinking about this, I was thinking about a sort of a dead skin mask, sort of like Leatherface-esque sort of thing. Um, I've always been fond of that sort of, you know... Hannibal Lecter did it in Silence of the Lambs. You know, he wore the the other guy's face, and I thought that was really cool. I always liked the idea of wearing somebody else's face. Um, but then I just realized that uh, you know Corey Taylor's mask, his Iowa mask, is basically that whole premise. It's basically rotted skin wrapped around his head. You know, his mask even has a nipple on the on the back of it uh, to showcase that it's it's supposed to be uh, a woman's skin. But um, so I I wouldn't want to do that. I wouldn't want to just copy Corey's idea. Um, and then, so I started thinking, and I'm, I'm going through ideas of, like, serial killers and, and stalkers and, you know, bondage and all this stuff. But it's all been done in Slipknot before. Like, each of these guys has, has a unique, you know, mask that sort of represents their character and stuff like that. So if, if I was going to, you know, design my own Slipknot mask, I think I'd go for something that was just completely, uh, you know, unique and not really, didn't really have a theme or anything. But... Maybe something like like this, which is sort of a steampunk, sort of uh, you know, I don't even know. It just looks. It reminds me of steampunk, and it's just really creepy looking. It looks like it could be a Slipknot mask, um, or maybe something uh, demonic, uh, something like this. You know, uh, something that has you know some demonic type of features and 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 stuff like that. Um, but either way, it would definitely have to be a custom-made mask, not something that was, uh, you know, just bought at a Halloween store. So, with that said, anyways, um, I'm not going to be in Slipknot anytime soon, anyways. <laughs> but, uh, you know, that would be a pretty cool uh, dream, anyway, to be in that band. But, uh, anyways, I'm going to wrap this up. This gameplay is coming to an end here. This was a pretty long commentary, actually. But, uh, yeah, I got out what I wanted to say about the new Slipknot album. I want to hear what your guys' opinions are going to be about the new album coming out if you guys are Slipknot fans, or even if you're not Slipknot fans. How would you guys feel if your favorite band lost their bass player and their drummer? Do you think that they could be replaced? You know, do you think that they could just be replaced by new members and, and have the band maintain the same sound and the same style that they've had? You know, leave a comment below. Please like, favorite, and subscribe to the video. And uh, follow me on Twitter, at VileSelf. If you want in on the Mystery Quote Challenge, where you get to choose the next topic for my video and get a free shout-out like Shock Waffles did in this video. I want to thank you guys for watching. This is the end of commentary. Vile Self, out.